Today, we are going to look at a BodyViz Brain Builder about diabetic foot ulcers. Before we can learn about diabetic foot ulcers, we need to have an understanding of the arterial vasculature and innervation of the lower limb. The arterial vasculature of the leg and foot begins with the popliteal artery of the leg that divides into two terminal branches at the posterior surface of the knee. These two terminal branches are the anterior and posterior tibial arteries. The anterior tibial artery eventually becomes the dorsalis pedis artery in the foot at the ankle joint and continues on around the bones of the foot until it passes inferiorly as the deep plantar artery that eventually joins with the deep plantar arch of the sole of the foot. The posterior tibial artery passes inferiorly through the leg and enters the foot on the medial side of the ankle where the artery divides into the lateral plantar artery and the medial plantar artery. Both of these eventually form the deep plantar arch and join with the dorsalis pedis artery. There are three nerves that innervate the muscles of the foot and supply sensory input from various segments of the skin. These include the tibial, sural, and medial calcaneal nerves. Now that we have a basic understanding of the arterial vasculature and innervation of the lower limb, Let's learn about the cause of diabetic foot ulcers, and specifically learn about the effects of diabetes mellitus on the nerves and vasculature of the lower limb. Diabetes mellitus is known to cause peripheral neuropathy, which is damage to the nerves of the peripheral nervous system. Symptoms of peripheral neuropathy may include the gradual onset of numbness that is often preceded by a tingling sensation in the hands or feet, extreme sensitivity to touch, often including sharp, throbbing, or burning pain, muscle weakness, and high foot plantar pressure, which is a sensation of a high degree of pressure or pain on the sole of the foot when walking or standing. This is often accompanied by reduced joint mobility and foot deformities. Atherosclerosis is a disease of the cardiovascular system in which a substance called plaque which is composed of fat, cholesterol, calcium, and other substances, builds up within the arterial walls. Over time, this plaque hardens, narrowing the lumen of the artery, and thereby reducing blood flow to the capillaries downstream of the plaque buildup. This results in reduced oxygen levels in the peripheral tissues supplied by the affected arteries and capillaries, often resulting in tissue necrosis, which is death of the tissue. Diabetes mellitus and its accompanying chronic hyperglycemia, which is long-term increased glucose levels within the blood, result in various protein, lipid, and carbohydrate metabolic abnormalities. Long-term alterations in lipid metabolism are known to contribute to the appearance of atherosclerosis. The combined effects of the reduced neural sensitivity of the skin and decreased peripheral blood flow caused by diabetes mellitus significantly increases the risk of poor blood flow to the tissue in the lower limbs, often resulting in diabetic ulcers. In addition, the reduced peripheral blood flow and accompanying tissue ischemia decreases the ability of the wounds to heal properly and in a timely fashion, thereby further increasing the probability of tissue necrosis. Now that we understand how diabetes mellitus can cause foot ulcers and the symptoms of peripheral neuropathy, Let's learn about the treatments for diabetic foot ulcers and finally give a patient example. There is no cure for diabetic neuropathy due to the tissue death. However, there are treatment options to help the treatment of the ulcers and minimize the pain experienced with ulcers, which can include cleaning the ulcers to prevent infection, taking pressure off the area of the ulcers with special bandaging to redistribute pressure, removing the dead skin and tissue around the ulcer, applying medication and dressings, and managing one's diabetes and other health problems to prevent worsening or future ulcers. Finally, let's take a look at a patient example. You receive your patient's file and take a look. Age, 52. Sex, male. Chief complaints, a swelling left foot with redness and pain. You invite the patient into your office for an examination. Your patient has a long history of struggling to manage his type 2 diabetes and obesity. Due to the peripheral neuropathy and atherosclerosis your patient has in his lower limbs, your patient finds it difficult to move 
due to the lack of blood circulation and feeling he has in his lower limbs. You remove his left shoe and can see that a large ulcer has developed on his foot and is causing the swelling, redness, and pain he is experiencing. You remove the dead tissue surrounding the ulcer, clean and dress the wound, and discuss trying to keep pressure off the area. You prescribe medication to hopefully help the ulcer heal quickly, but due to the lack of blood supply in the area, healing may take an extensive amount of time. This is a classic example of a diabetic foot ulcer. Want to see more 3D anatomy visualizations like the ones in this brain builder? Check out BodyViz 3D dissection software. Go to our website to schedule a demo today.